Hello, I'm Charlene Rayburn, part of the Pike Road Quilters of the Pike Road Art Center. I am happy to share with you our, what we hope is our first annual quilt show. Our quilt group began in the summer of 2019. We meet twice a month and we have a group of quilters from beginners to very experienced seasoned quilters. I want to share with you some of those today. Beginning with this beautiful quilt I have behind me, it's called the Star Quilt. This is a special quilt, it's a memory quilt. It's made by Susan Brandon Allville and it features a star print in the middle surrounded by uh, fabrics from her late husband's shirt. So it's a very special quilt to her. Uh, over to my left, we have a patriotic design that I made myself for my husband's birthday in 2018. He is a veteran and this is a special quilt to him. It features Old Glory in the middle, which is a pattern from Joann's. And then I just added the uh, patriotic blocks to the top and bottom, created a patriotic border and he enjoys this quilt. It's the perfect size for him relaxing on the couch. Here we have a country heart print. This is a patchwork design. Actually, this was done years ago by myself when I did not like to piece quilt, but I loved the quilting. And at that time I could see really well and I could make very small stitches. I have often started to give it away and I just couldn't quite do it. So uh, I enjoy this as a wall hanging. We are so thrilled to have a collection of vintage quilts on loan to us from Bunny Rittenhouse Smith. She has quite a collection of antique quilts and you know during that time you will notice that these are very small pieces because these quilts were made for necessity, for warmth. People didn't have a lot of supplies or patterns and so they just hand pieced the scraps of fabric that they might have on hand from clothing they had made. But she has a variety of these wonderful quilts that have been preserved. Uh, some of them are over a hundred years old and we are pleased to have them. I will mention them several times. This is called Symphony in Blue. It is a wall hanging or a table topper. My mother and I made this as a joint project. She began this design with the applique here and on the corners many years ago. And when she moved in with me four years ago, I found it in a box, picked it up, and just continued it from there. It is uh, to commemorate a famous quilt designer of the 1920s and she did this pattern from a dinner plate. So it's called Symphony in Blue and I love blue. Uh, up above we have a wall hanging by Linda Stringer which gives credit to grands. It speaks of the joy and all the great things that come from grandparents. This quilt was made by Bunny Rittenhouse Smith. It is a churn dash pattern and the blocks were given to her by the Birmingham Quilt Guild. She then pieced them together and hand quilted the quilt. This quilt is also, or she calls it the star quilt, was made for her father from fabrics that Bunny acquired at her grandmother's home. This is a beautiful design by Beth Ellen Hardy. Beth is one of our new quilters. She only got to come a few months before COVID hit and we had to stop meeting, but she has such a wonderful eye for color. She calls this September Sun, and I just love the design and the coordination of fabrics here. There are squares, triangles, and rectangles, so it's a patchwork design that creates a beautiful uh, illusion. As you look, you can see the depth of this design. This is a beautiful quilt made by Bunny Rittner Smith. It is a log cabin design. She calls it log cabin in blue. And this is a popular design among quilters and fun to put together. 
This is a quilt by Dee Mueller. Dee is a member of our Pike Road Quilters group, and Dee loves to travel and collects fabrics as she does. She collected these red and white prints from a number of states and put them together in this uh, piece she uses as a tablecloth or a Christmas decoration or Valentine's, and it's called All My Exes. This is a quilt made by my mother, Evelyn Howell, who is a very seasoned quilter. This features a form of log cabin and then star blocks that are all patchwork. It alternates. She made this in a first Saturday class um, probably 10, 12 years ago, but it's a very large quilt. And because of the design here of the log cabin, it's called the Courthouse Steps. Our quilt group has had a couple of projects over the past year. One of those was that we made pillowcases. This pillowcase you make out of the body and it may match your quilt. Then you add a cuff and a contrasting piece. The um, finished product features a flat felt seam. So it's a very neat um, special project. We've just about all, everyone made a pillowcase and also above we have a miniature Amish design by Bunny Rittenour Smith and um, it features a nine patch. This quilt is called Shades of Blue. It is made by the mother-daughter team, my mother Eveline Howell and myself, um, over a number of years. It features a basket of embroidered flowers in the center with other embroidered vines and squares and triangles um, then patchwork triangles forming a star design the quilt was intended to stop here but we added more to increase the size of it this quilt has been hand quilted by my mother and during the pandemic <laughs> This miniature quilt was made by Bunny Rittenour Smith. It's called Red Applique Hearts, and um, she has appliqued these by hand and hand quilted. This quilt was made by Evelyn Howell, and she calls it sharing. She was going to a class where they were to be bring their pre-cut pieces of fabric in assorted colors. Once they arrived, everyone put their fabrics on the table, and then each person walked around, picked the colors they wanted, and they put them all together, having quite an array of colors. A unique thing about this quilt is that she originally made this for a tablecloth and it ended at this red border. However, she found it not very useful, so recently she added the yellow border and green binding to turn it into a quilt. This quilt was made by Becky Neuenswander. It's called a handkerchief quilt. Each handkerchief applique onto this quilt has special meaning, whether from an aunt or a grandmother or some special event during her life. This quilt is made by Eveline Howell. It features black and white. It has 12 squares of black and white patchwork and then uh, 12 squares of different months of the year, something representing summertime, Halloween, Christmas, the windy season. Uh, it is a fun quilt to look at and figure out the different months and the borders in the checked really make them stand out. This is a beautiful Chinese Tree of Life quilt. It was made from a kit by Eveline Howell which came with the backing, the foundation fabric, and all of these colors and that had to be cut out and then applique onto the quilt. They were then in hand embroidered and then the quilt was quilted. This was done probably 20 years ago. This is a treasured quilt to Dee Mueller, the maker of this beautiful candle wicking quilt. She made this in 1985 with her late mother. So it is a special treasure. Many years ago, people did not have many supplies and the ladies would actually take the candle wicking thread or the uh, wicks and actually use them for embroidery. You formed a knot and um, that is what forms the embroidery on here.
It's always done on muslin. This quilt was made by Linda Stringer for her son Steve upon his wedding. It's called Our Pike Road Places, and these are places that Steve grew up at Pike Road that were favorite places to go, like Kirpsey's and the Marks House, his home, and now uh, his parents' home, and the fire station. So it's a special place, and to Steve, these were some of his favorites. This little quilt is called Sunbonnet Sue. It was made by Eveline Howell, and she enjoyed so much picking out the different colors for each little girl uh, from her stash of fabrics. She has uh, bordered them in a small little popper for each one, and sashed them in white, and finished off the binding in purple. Here we have a display of some quilting supplies that we use and again we have one of those beautiful vintage quilts on loan to us um, and these are some vintage squares that were passed along to us that we hope to do something with um, this is another one of the projects that our quilt group has made this is called a pin cushion and a thread catcher we made these in our class they're very useful to put beside your sewing machine, all those strings that you cut off. Rather than letting them land on the floor, you can simply drop them in the basket. Um, I mentioned that quilting is much easier today, and one of the reasons is that you can buy pre-cut fabrics. This is known as a jelly roll. It has about 40 pieces in this roll, and they're all coordinating strips of the width of the fabric by two and a half inches. You can get them in a variety of colors and designs and um, just do your own creative thing. These are called layer, some kind of stack, I can't remember, but they're five inch squares. And then there are also 10 inch squares that are called cake stacks. These are some tools used. This is a cutter, which makes cutting fabric much more accurate using a straight edge. And we love um, someone loaning this beautiful old Singer machine to us that many of us grew up learning to sew on. Up here we have a quilt by Linda Stringer that she made for her granddaughter and it's called Friends. It features little girls facing each other and um, a gingham border in between, and it was real special for her granddaughter. Over here, we have a quilt by Becky Neuenswander. This is called Simplify. However she described it, it's not very simple. It features two rectangles, uh, which are rather tricky to put together. She has used unique fabrics, which are from the 1930 era fabrics. She has used white sashing and background and finished it off with a pretty green border. This quilt was made by Dee Mueller and it's called Windmills. You can see the windmill design in the middle of each square. And then she has a, uh, what we call piano key border outside and then finished off with a yellow coordinating border. This quilt is also made from the 1930 era fabrics. These two quilts were made by Becky Dillenswander. They are known as Kansas Troubles 1 and 2. They are basically the same pattern but rearranged to have a totally different look. Um, Becky has used pretty much the same colors, the reds, blues, greens, and it's just real bright and colorful. They have a little bit different border. She's put in a, a small uh, border here that really makes it stand out. Here we have a quilt made by Eveline Howell that she calls Just for Fun. It's a Pennsylvania Dutch design that she calls it cheater's cloth, but it's whole cloth. It, she simply put one seam in the middle joining two fabrics, pieces of fabric together to do this, and then it was machine quilted by Kelly Thompson of Weetonkin. This quilt was made by Dee Mueller. She calls it Sweet Little Girls. She 
purchased these little squares of um, little girls. She actually cut them out, colored them with just regular color crayons, and then set the color with a hot iron and wax paper. She appliqued them on here after they were colored and then put them in 12 inch blocks, dividing, sashing with a lavender fabric and then finishing with a couple of borders. This quilt was made by Janet Willingham. It is called French Quarter and it features jelly rolls. As I mentioned earlier, she used a, an assortment pack of jelly rolls in different colors to create this. Janet is one of our new quilters. Uh, she started coming at the beginning of our classes and has probably completed more quilts than anyone. The quilt in front of me is a quilt made by Eveline Howell and myself. It was started many years ago from a kit of embroidery, cross stitch embroidery squares. There are 12 squares put together and then this popper as we call it the bright blue which brings out the blue in the design and then we use the sashing in a print it's as you can tell we love blue these two quilts were made by janet willingham for her grandchildren this one she calls the tractor quilt which her young grandson loves tractors of all kinds and it's interesting that one of these old tractors is an Oliver tractor and his name is Oliver. This one is Mickey and Minnie. Of course that was made after their visit to Disney World and it's a real special quilt to that grandchild. This quilt was made by Dee Mueller. It is called a disappearing nine patch and it's made using charm packs. Those are five inch squares which you can buy in a stack and they usually have coordinating prints. Dee use, uses this to decorate in her home. The quilt above is made by Evelyn Howell. It is truly a work of art. It is called The Queen and Her Court. It features in the middle a center square which represents the queen and then the star patchwork designs all around are her court. It also features the floral applique running all through the quilt. This quilt was a combination of machine and hand quilting. She hand quilted all of the squares and triangles, but there was an open area in here that she felt like needed more quilting, so it was done with a meandering design on the machine. This quilt was made by Nita Forks. It was her first quilt. She was not very interested in quilting, uh, even though her family has been involved in it, but she was given a cake stack, which is a package of 10 inch squares, which there were 42. She was shown how to join these together, and then she got more interested and added this little border of uh, small squares and enlarged the quilt by adding a border. And it goes great on her couch. It's a good cuddle quilt. This quilt was made by Evelyn Howell. Um, it is a collection of, of patchwork squares and then they are set on point and using setting triangles and then divided with a border in between. It's a very large quilt and was probably completed in 2018. This quilt is called Dayflower. It was made by Susan Brandon Allville. Susan tells us that she enjoyed so much picking out the colors of this quilt. She loves the blue and green and was a little hesitant about the darker color, but she was encouraged to try that and she really enjoyed it. This is another form of a log cabin. As you can see, you start with a center square, add another one, then you go a little larger. This one's a little more intricate because it has these triangles, so it's not necessarily a log cabin, but a form of that. She's done a beautiful job on this and keeps it on her big king-size bed. This quilt was made by Beth Ellen Hardy. Beth Ellen, as I mentioned before, is new to our group, but has made some beautiful quilts. We did not know this before the show, but she calls this whale's tail. 
Uh, she has the name of the pattern, but you can see the whale tail coming out of the water. She tried very much in the water to create uh, bubbles and waves and things, but it's a beautiful design and she has a great choice of colors. This is a giraffe collage created by Beth Ellen Hardy. Again, she has a great choice of colors. She put together this design forming the giraffe and used actually used some drapery fabric to create the greenery, the tree branch that the giraffe is reaching for. The background is called newsprint and I think it's just a great compliment to any room. Behind me I have another quilt made by Beth Ellen Hardy. This is called Light in My Window. This is completely hand pieced and hand quilted. It's a beautiful design by her. Uh, she saw this in a magazine and copied it and I think the colors are just beautiful. This quilt was made by myself, Charlene Rayburn. It began as a demonstration of a great tool we use here in our quilting class. It's called AccuQuilt. It's been said that the AccuQuilt is the greatest invention since sliced bread. You can actually cut six layers of one fabric of a design. For instance, this patch is made up of four squares and four triangles put together. The trick to this quilt is putting, laying it out so that you get the design and it's called Jewel Box. I finished it off with coordinating borders and enlarged it with this outer border. And as I mentioned earlier, um, we made pillowcases and I made a pillowcase to match this quilt that I might store it in. This quilt is called Flower Garden. It was made by Elizabeth Forks at a very young age of seven or eight. Uh, she was given close supervision in cutting out five inch squares and then they form a design and you repeat the same thing, dropping a row each time. Uh, she did not complete this quilt until she was much older, but it is a, forms a special diagonal which is real interesting. I made this quilt beginning in 1994 in a first Saturday quilt class. We created blocks uh, each month and they were different, all coordinating. And it, then it took me years before I pulled it out and actually put it together. This is a very warm quilt. It is flannel. In fact, I'm not sure we even have nights cold enough to sleep under this. But it has squares which are set on point and with the setting triangles and then finished off with the coordinating borders. Uh, it was beautifully quilted on the machine by Kelly Thompson of Wetumpka. This quilt is called As I Wait. The designer of this quilt gave it this name because over six years she created this design sitting in her car watching her three sons at their sporting events. It features a pomegranate center and then a pomegranate vine around it and then many patchwork um, squares around it. It also has an hourglass patchwork design. There are over 1,588 little small pieces in this quilt that does not include the applique pieces. It is made by my mother, Eveline Howell, in 2018, finished in 2019. This wall hanging or table topper was made by Susan Brandon Alville. It features cardinals in the wintertime and it's bordered in red and white. Um, she enjoys using this during the holidays. There are many forms of art. There are artists who make ceramics and pottery and oil paintings, and then there are quilters. And there is nothing more satisfying than completing that quilt. It is a great form of creativity, and as you have seen here today, we have many talented artists in our community who enjoy the art of quilting. 
Five Great Quilters has been involved in a number of projects to benefit our community. Last Christmas, we decorated a Christmas tree which was in a silent auction. We handmade all of the ornaments and it was auctioned off. The money went to the Area Food Bank. We also loved to celebrate Veterans Day in Pike Road and the Pike Road quilters have made a number of veterans quilts which we give away at the Veterans Day celebration. We are currently working on a beautiful quilt right now so we invite all of our veterans to be in the drawing for that special quilt.